we have our main area, which is right here that shows all our claims. If we would like to get a copy of that, it's real simple. I can take my mouse, click on Print Claims Grid, and I can either send it to the printer, send it to a preview, um, or if you have a uh, PDF uh, on your printer, you can send it to the PDF writer. So if I want to see this, click OK and expand the tree, and you can see your claims grid. It's that easy. So, so to get to get out of this window, you're either going to hit the X on the top right hand side of the screen, or we can use the little door that will close the event viewer. I'll show you some more features that we have added. Another one that we have is we have a select all, which instant, instantly marks everything in dark blue. I can then select move to. So this is an easier way to mark up claims uh, to a selective drawer. So if I need to send this over to a selected drawer, I can simply do so by selecting the drawer and clicking OK. It's that easy. Where you would mainly use this for is if I had incoming claims on my inbox. OK. Um, if we come over here where you would use this, When you click on the inbox, I can instantly mark the line by hitting select all and clicking the move. Then I can put it to whatever uh, drawer that I want. And I get a confirmation and click on yes. All right, we're going to continue on. And um, we're out of the, we're still not in a claim. I'm going to come over here to my SimSol seminar, make sure that my claims grid is on. And another thing that we'd uh, also like to show you is that we have a find button that's available. So when I click on the find button, if you had a problem trying to find a file, it'll automatically bring up this window. I can then scroll down and find the claim. Or Let's see if I want to take Buck's copy, which is right here. Double click. It'll take me right to the drawer that that's associated to. Also on the find button, I can also search for the file number. Okay. So whatever the file number is, like 57110, I can search on our file number, select that category, and type in 57, and it just has to be an it's an intelligent search so I already knew that I wanted to go to 57 110 it completes the search I click OK it takes me right there okay the next thing that I would like to show you is that on the drawer properties so I've, I have a drawer selected in this case um, I went to the training drawer but I'm going to come over here to the SimSol seminar drawer and what you need to know of if you're taking a update from simsol.com, then once you've taken the update, you have to apply it to the drawer properties. So how I do that is real simple. I'm going to take my mouse, go up to drawer properties. Now there used to be a delete drawer under the manage. It is not there uh, anymore. To if you do want to delete a drawer, take your mouse, right click, and then you'll see the delete drawer option. Okay. So if you ever need to delete a drawer, you're going to go to the claims enclosure tree, find the drawer, right click, and then use the option of delete drawer. To edit a pre-existing drawer, highlight the drawer and go to drawer properties. Now that I have that in there, I can now come up and select building DB and select the appropriate pricing table. So in this case, I'm going to April 2012 and clicking on done. Then I can also, what I wanted to bring up is the new feature, is that we have the available three-digit zip codes. In the 4.0 system, we have a five-digit zip code. And the reason why we did this is because 
we were finding an inconsistency in pricing on major metropolitan areas. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say that you were doing a claim in um, Richmond, Texas. If you ever know about Richmond, Texas, it's right next to Dallas, okay? That has a whole different zip code. Well, what we found is when we, on the 4.0, is that when we put the five-digit zip code in, the price for doing the work in Richmond was about, that it would be inconsistent. It would probably be about maybe up to like 10 to 15% difference from the main major metropolitan area. So we found out that the data or the labor force is coming from Dallas to do the work to do in Richmond. So to make it consistent, we changed our five-digit zip code to a three-digit zip code. So please be aware of that, okay? Um, I want to show you a tool that's new into SimSol. So how I do that is I'm going to go Muted. to tools and I'm looking for a tool called cost query. I can select the SimSol commercial residential, select April 2012, select done, and it brings up my national cost query engine. In this case, I can now search for uh, by location. So if I want to keep it at 135, 135, 135, or I can uh, select the area. So in this case, I'm going to select uh, 32826. So 328 is going to give me Orlando instantly. See? When I bring it in, my material is 100, 105, and 100. I'm going to accept the new factors, and now I can search for the line item that I would like to search for. So if I was looking for carpeting, select, it brings up all my carpeting. So I'm going to say good grade carpeting. So when I select that, it's going to give me my spec. It's going to give me what the database is reporting for that location. And it's 2139 a square yard. My high is 2353. My low is 1925. So that's between a 10% difference. I can change that by saying that I want to do 15. Not 150, but 15. There we go. And so as you can see, that the low goes another 5% lower and the high is increased by another 5%. So my database is reporting 2139 for material, 2460 uh, on the high, and then 1818 on the low for material cost. My grand total is 2755 for good grade carpeting. The plus is 3168 and 2342 for the low. So I'm going to click on done to get out of that. Okay, and I'm going to continue on to the next topic. I'm going to go into a claim. And here I have a claim, and what I wanted to show you is the look is a little bit different, okay? Our speed icons look fairly similar. Um, we also have the statement of loss generator that has been included in the total pages for the building, APS, and contents. I'm going to show you that in just a second. But there's a new feature that we have here called Map. So when I click on this feature, it's making a call to uh, MapQuest, and I'm going to move it over here as soon as it uh, gets that address. So here we go. So as I move it over, it has the map. Okay, it can also get you the directions um, by clicking on Get Directions. So let me unmute this and see if there's any questions on this. Unmuted. Any questions on that? Unmuted. Any questions on that? Once you have do? that map quest up, yes. right in the middle there where it shows the map over on the right-hand side, yes, you can click on satellite and get a satellite view of that. Property That's correct. Well. correct. Yeah. And also live traffic if you need that. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why would we do that? Uh, actually, you could uh, get your directions right over here where it says get directions. 
Okay, so if we're working in an area we don't know about. Correct. Okay. Two thousand eight for Ike, we had to show uh, at least my adjusting company required us to show a Google map view of the property. When and this we is one way going. this is one way of doing it. Right, right. And here's my directions if you needed that. So it's a very nice feature. All it does is put the name and address in the map question and maps maps your loss. Okay. 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 Thank you. Good. Thank all right, you. I'm gonna I'm going to mute you all here for just a second and go to the next topic. Muted. Um, I was uh, showing you a statement of loss generator. By default, it was associated to the loss information screen. To do a statement of loss gener uh, report is really easy. I take my mouse, I click on SOL. Basically, the estimate's already written, so I can just click on building, copy all, APS, copy all, contents, copy all, and recap. So my statement of loss can track the recoverable and non-recoverable depreciation very, very easily. And that's what a statement of loss generator does. It's very easy to actually create one for wind claims and any other claim except for flood, because flood does, uh, does not really use the statement of loss because it has its final report. So I'm gonna click on done here, but I wanna show you what the new thing that we have done. We come over here to total page, and you can see the look is a little bit different. It used to be Sherlock Holmes, and I'm going to ignore the advisory, but I just wanted to show you that I can access the statement of loss generator from the total page of the building, the contents, APS, uh, portions of the estimate. So wherever the estimate is, I can go to the building, total page, APS, total page, and contents, it's called the inventory summary page on contents, and you can get the statement of loss generator from that, so it's consistent. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about an audit. Well, let's go into a scope of damage, excuse me. And let me go into another estimate here. And I have the area. Now, this is the new look. Okay, you're all familiarized on how to pick the line items. That has not changed. Okay, I wanna stress that. The, the way that you pick the items have not changed. It's just that what we have done is to be compliant with the various different uh, tablets that are out there. Uh, we made the buttons or the methods of operation, the eight, nine, and zero, the scope numbers, larger. Okay, so it's easier to read for you, and the line items is an easy read to pick the to pick the line items. So, for example, um, we also um, change the color uh, for our categories. So our categories is in a light blue, and each category is a light blue. So cleanup costs goes up to cleanup costs. Water remediation goes to water remediation. That really hasn't really changed except for the color, okay? But everybody seems to like the new look. Um, the preview window that you see that's over there on the far right, it's called entire database. It's very similar to the more detail, but it shows you everything in the database. So for example, if I was looking for wall items, and when I click on the wall items, go to wall drywall taped and floated. So when I click on that, I can then say I want to go to half inch. I can instantly look at my entire database, click half inch, and then hit scope number three, which is remove and replace, and then apply either the height or area of percentage or price or depreciation. Okay? So with that in being, our look has now been changed a little bit. So I'm going to open it up for discussion and see what you think about that one. Unmuted. Down at the bottom, Danny? Yes. 
when you selected that item, uh, mine just has across the line quantity square foot. It doesn't have the depreciation and the area broken down like that. How are you viewing that window on the bottom versus the list? Okay, here's the list mode here. As you can see, there's our, our estimate progressing. Right. If I come back over to the VSS and I click on view, what you want to do is make sure that the view list in VSS mode is unchecked. If I check it, it looks like this. Exactly, okay. To get that out, you click on view and uncheck it. That gives the conventional view. So or the default the line item pops up every time. Yes, and there's some advantages using the view that you're using. Uh, personally, um, I like this view better than the other one. The reason why is I can see the best of both worlds. If I need to resize my screen, watch my, I'm putting my cursor right on that bar, then I can drag up so I can see more of the line items in the list mode. So for example, adjust it, then you just double click it down below. Then I just double click on it, brings me up my full override screen, as you can see there. Thank you. So I'm going to change the view back to the conventional. Uh, as before, you can always adjust the height, the percentage, depreciation. You can always go to the full override screen by hitting the override screen there. All righty, uh, we're going to continue on. So we have, we're going to look at the new audit uh, feature that we put in. But before I do that, I just want to show you that we've added uh, quite a bit of more items to our VSS screen. I'm going to jump down. If you guys are roof, uh, if you if you guys are flood adjusters, uh, this is really not going to make a lot of sense to you because you don't get on roofs. But if you take a look, we've added, for example, composition shingles with felt. Before we never had felt. Okay, so re what we've done is we've added a lot more line items to this database, as well as um, changing some different descriptions. Uh, for the database. So for example, here I got composition with uh, felt. So when I go to the second level, you can see I have fiberglass down to ridge vent for roof, plus the additional items, okay? If you would like to see an item that's not in our database, you can email me at dannys, D-A-N-N-Y-S, at simsol.com. Uh, one thing I would also like to show you is, as if you saw, I went down to wall, drywall, taped, and floated. If you recall in the 4.0, we had a plus plus on drywall. That has been eliminated. Okay, that was a 25% markup in cost, okay, in the base price. We have now taken that out. We've added wall drywall with dimple finish, which is a little bit more money on the on the finish, though. But uh, the plus plus has been eliminated. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. So now that we're done with the VSS uh, uh, portion of it, um, I'm going to go to the total page. Now I'm going to the total page here and when I select the total page, I'm going to get an audit feature, which I'm going to show you right now. And what the audit feature is going to do is check for stupid stuff. So we got coverage information, missing area dimensions, zero quantities, unit costs, zero depreciations, any items over $2,500, it will all be detected, okay? So we added a lot more uh, probably an intelligent um, audit functionality uh, to the audit uh, feature. So if I were you, uh, please always check the audit uh, before you can continue on. Now, when I come up here to total page, I have O&P, add-ons, and sales tax. There is a new feature called 
other tax. I just want to bring this up. You'll probably never use it. The other tax is if you are doing uh, homeowners claims in the state of Arizona, okay? The reason why we have this in here is because Arizona has elected to charge the contractor or the insurance company a privilege tax, meaning the right to work in their state. So there's a new one for you now. They're, they need more money. So Arizona tr uh, transaction privilege tax has been added to the system. And then all you have to do is set the rate. Usually I think it's like 2% right now. and You can set the rate in there. So that has been added into the system. Okay. Um, we also have, remember, if you're doing flood, there is a salvage button or wind. And when you do the salvage operation, it's going to be done by a lump sum basis. So, for example, current salvage value, if you did have to add salvage, you would put the total of all the salvage in and then put your reason for that. Okay? If you're doing flood, there's a protection button. Okay, if you it's based off the wizard. Uh, if you click on flood claim, it's going to give you protection, and then you can type in sandbagging up to the limit of probably one thousand dollars, if I recall. Okay. Okay. Now, it could be under property removal or protective measures. Make sure that you pick the type of loss mitigation. In this case, protective measures. Property removal will mainly be used in a contents application. If you have to do sandbagging by a compute of payment, I can come up and say that we have 20 hours and the material was given to you by the fire department, you could say in your notes, 10 hours, two people, to make your 20 hours, and click on done. All right, uh, another thing that I don't know if you've ever worked with was the haggle. That's kind of a neat feature. Basically, it's nothing more than a punch list, um, but what I can do with the haggle is I can actually change quantities very easy. So for example, if I needed three squares for composition shingles felt, I could just click on this and select three squares or 15 squares. So I can make my change very, very easily from this window. Where this really comes into play is if you were doing doors, okay? So I can put that in. If I need to change maybe the drip edge, very easy to change. I also can change the price. I don't have to go and find out which room or which area it's located. I just click on it, make my change. Another nice feature is, is I can um, actually print this to a PDF, but I can also use an export button to export that in an Excel spreadsheet. And click Save. Okay, so once I do that, it's now saved. I could actually go in there and see it in an Excel spreadsheet and then have the contractor price it for me too. So if he wants to take a look at the estimate, he can make whatever changes he wants and then he can send that back to you in an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to open it up for discussion. Unmuted. Any questions on that? Any questions on that? So anytime you change anything in the haggle screen, it edits the whole report to reflect that haggle adjustment. Correct. Correct. And it's really nice if you were doing an apartment complex and you had multiple door, like a door schedule. You can say, I want uh, two doors for this room and you only had one, or I could change the price for a particular room and it's going to add it. Uh, 
All right. All right. So, so that is on our, our total, total page. page. And and I'm showing you that the new audits review audit screen has changed a little bit. Like I said, it what used to be Sherlock Holmes. Now you get this little triangle with a a post up your mouth. Okay. I'm going to ignore the, the advisory and continue on. Um, another thing that's been added is going to be using uh, third party uh, import. Uh, like, for example, Aerial Logics, if you do roofs, what we've done is we've teamed up uh, with these companies. And if being a roof adjuster mainly, if you go out and you order that report, SimSaw will bring that report in. So what I'm going to do is go to scope of damage and I'm gonna bring in this report. So I get this report by email from Pictometry or Aerial Logics or whatever third party vendor. To bring that report in, I'm gonna select roof, and you're gonna see third party import. So when I left click on this, I can pick the report, which provider report provided the report. In this case, it's going to be Aerial Logics. I'm gonna click okay, and I'm going to find it. And in this case, I've got it here under ALPRT uh, 23911. I double click on it, it automatically brings in my roof squares, and all I need to do is put in a waste factor. But it also does a little bit more than that. So when I click on scope, I can now come over here and go to roofing commercial and select built up roofing, hit scope three, and guess where I've guess the quantities come up from that report and places it down to one one 115.9 squares for remove and replace built up roofing. Is that not cool? So basically we can get your um, diagram in there as well because when I click on this, I'm gonna click on done to get out of it for just a second. And I'm gonna come down here to my dig to my photos. Okay, I'm on the diagram here. Let me just scroll down right here. There we go. So when, if you take a look, I'm going to go all the way down because it's bringing it in. This is what I got from Aerial Logic. So it takes the pictures from the report and it puts it into my um, digital images. So here's the whole uh, diagram of that building. There's the east side, there's the links. This would be my whole diagram. I can zoom up. As you can see, it has all the dimensions. Come back here to the north side, pitches, south side, as well as west side. So basically, what we do is we read their report, we put it into the system, we put it in by slope or by, by the areas, and we, get, we attain the quantities for replacing the total roof, and then we can apply that. That's how easy it is. And you can do roof claims probably in a quarter of the time. Okay, um, what we're gonna talk about now is digital photos. We have uh, redone our digital photos uh, imager, and I wanna show you how the easiest way to bring in photos. I have some photos in there already, but I'm gonna show you, uh, this is the new interface that we have. So as you can see, it's in a thumbnail type uh, of presentation. Uh, when you select digital photos, I'm going to delete this uh, these photos very easily by right-clicking. This is a new 
new feature, right clicking, going to multi delete and left click. And it brings me up to my multi delete screen. I'm going to hold the first item that I'd like to, or first photo I'd like to delete, hold the shift key down, go to the last item. Everything in the middle goes dark blue. And what I want you to be pay attention to is you must pack when done. If you do not, your images will still be retained in the SimSol system. So please pack all deleted photos. So when I click on delete, it's now gone. And now I can start to uh, re-put photos in. So I'm right here on my digital photos. I can come right up here to thumbnail import, go and find the photos. So your photos have to be either in the, in the camera or somewhere on the computer. Now to do that, I take my mouse, I click on the floppy drive, which is the browse button. So when I click on it, I find my photos. In this case, it was under my documents, Mr. Hodge. I left click on it. I left click OK. Those images are now found. Now what you want to do is what we have added would be a select all. So now all these images are now selected. The only thing I need to do is hit done, and it instantly grabs all the images associated to that folder and brings them in. I'm now going to unmute for just a second. Unmuted. OK, do you see how we got those? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any questions on that? You, you lost your aerial, aerial logic. Yes, sir, I did. But I can go back and uh, grab them again if I needed to. Okay. I mean, you would do that by importing the roof again. That is correct, sir. Okay. Okay. Now, what the reason why I had a lot of photos in, I just wanted to uh, show you how to bring them in. So, for example, I need to mark these uh, photos now. They're in the system. Now I can expand this. See the little plus over here where it says digital photos? So when I select it, it should expand it. There we go. Two ways to get these in. I click on my, digi my digital photos. And I, I can take the first image, double left click, and it expands it in the tree. See how it explodes? There's my digital image. I can now title it. Make sure I have a date taken. Make my comment. I Don't forget about the spell check. So if you can't spell dog, I'd be hitting that button a lot. Okay, so you can see once I click on done, it will then. Okay, where do you use the spell check? Bring it up. ABC spell check. And then I can continue on. Do the drop down for the taken by. Okay. I can do a gesture. Contractor, insured, owner, or appraiser. Now I select that in my maintain preferences, and then I go to digital photos. So all the photos will have a gesture if I needed that, or insured, or contractor. Now if I wanted to put a specific name in there, I could set that up before I imported the images. Like what name would you like? Uh, well, my name, for exact, uh, for example, who, the adjuster who took the photos. It'll just say adjuster, not the name. But if you click on the part where it says taken by adjuster, even you don't even have to explode it. You can change the name, correct? Yeah. Well, I can change the name here.
Yes. And where do you change it to globally change it for all? I have to get out of client. Go to maintain. Preferences. And it's going to be coming down. I think it's under system preferences. Photos taken by adjuster. Oh, by the way, you can put your logo in right here. So now any new claim that I do, I'm just going to come down to my photos here and use my multi-delete again. Remember, not I have to pack. So when I bring this in, and I select it. There it is. Taken by Danny. OK, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Now, if I open a new claim, will your name Danny still be on the new claim? I'll have to set a preference for each new claim I open. No, it'll be there for every every new claim because I that's a template. Because I want to show you how to put annotations in. Alrighty, what I'm going to do for putting in annotations, take our mouse, and I'm going to go into the into the actual picture you want to annotate. I could do it from the thumbnail or I can expand this. There we go. And then pick the appropriate image. Okay. So if I want to annotate that, and what I mean by annotations is I'm going to post some type of image on top, uh, some type of line or text on top of the image itself. So that's what annotation is. I'm going to take my mouse and I have to turn it on. Now the way to turn it on is the paintbrush. It says enable annotations. Left click on enable annotations. That activates my tools. In this case, I'm going to pick the arrow and I'm going to left click and draw to the position where I want that arrow to be displayed. I now can select the text tool. And with the text tool, guys, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a box. Don't just left click because it's not going to do it for you. Take Take the mouse, place it right where you want the text box to start, left click, and you're going to draw and make a box. It's real important that you do that. When I let go, it draws the box and it's ready for input. Now I can say water height at six inches. And then I'm going to use my blue arrow. To post. So you see my water height at six inches. I need to expand that. There we go. Next thing I'd like to show you is scan documents. Um, what we're going to be doing here is you need to be aware that scan documents is 
that's what really blows up uh, the file sizes in your claim files. You need to uh, use a balance, is what I call it. And we're going to be using a grayscale, okay, which is a 24-bit color. And that's not as good as a color, a true color bit. Because uh, when we put so many colors on there, it will blow up our size, especially at an 8.5 by 11 image. So we're going to use a compromise. So the first thing that I'm going to do is come up to Scan Documents, right-click using my mouse, and left-click New. Now what I need to do is I need to pick the scanner. I'm going to click on Scanner. And I need you have to make sure that your scanner is selected. Okay, so I'm having my scanner warm up. I'm placing the image on the scanner. And as you can see, I have the Epson that's going to come up here on the Twain. And there we have the Twain. Click OK. And as soon as it comes up, it's selected. And it will make the call up there. So it's still warming up. My scanner still warming up. So once I have selected that, I'm going to click on Scan. And it should bring me up the interface. What I'm going to do here is, there we go. There's the Epson Twain. Now, see how I have Epson black and white? That's a very good scan. I can also use a, depending on your scanning software, black and white document, black and white photo, color document, and color photo. If you use a black and white document, let's see what kind of scan we're going to get. And there it is. Now, what it does is it puts it into a TIFF image always. A TIFF is a little bit, it's not like a JPEG. This is an uncompressed document, and that's how we have to bring them in. So you can do two things. If you want that to be a JPEG, we can put that into a scanned document and bring it in as an open file, which you see right here. But if you need to put it automatically in, then you can um, select the type of image that you want, click on scan, and, and then it will import that image. For those who are using um, multi, uh, which is a flatbed scanner, excuse me, um, a document feeder, excuse me, you can then on your select scanner pick the document feeder. And when it brings up the call, you can select a document feeder on there. So I'm going to come over here. You can hit photo, web, or text. Uh, that's not the one I wanted to use. I'm going to use the different type of scanner. Here we go document feeder. So if you're using a document feeder, you must select that. This is where I would say grayscale and color picture. You want to use grayscale. And then you can preview it. I don't have anything in that other scanner, so but that's how you would that's how you want to scan your images. You want it at a grayscale, you want it eight and a half by eleven. And if you're using a document feeder, you must select document feeders. If I ever wanted to bring a photo to 8.5 by 11, I'll use the scan document, open file, and I'm going to go and find a photo here. 
So basically, if I needed an explosion of this, click on open, and it's eight and a half by 11. Remember that your image comes in at five by four. This is gonna print eight and a half by 11 under scan documents. So that's a little trick for you. Okay. So that's pretty much all the enhancements uh, that we have in our system. So we did digital photos, scan documents, the new VSS look, uh, one thing that I am not showing you is a diagram. 